we are asked to simplify the given square roots and assume all variables are greater than or equal to zero. Looking at our notes below, for n greater than or equal to zero, if m equals n squared, then the square root of m equals n. As a numerical example, to simplify the square root of 16, we're looking for a non-negative number times itself, or a non-negative number squared equal to 16. And because four times four, or four squared equals 16, the square root of 16 equals four. By showing the work this way, we can also think of the square root as undoing the squaring, giving us one factor of four. For the first example, we have the square root of p squared, which means we're looking for a variable times itself, or a variable squared equal to p squared, which means the square root of p squared simplifies to one factor of p. Again, the reason the square root of p squared is equal to p is because if we take the variable p and we square it, we do get the expression under the square root, which is called the radicand of p squared. Next, we have the square root of 25y squared, which means we're looking for a variable expression times itself, or the square of a variable expression equal to 25y squared. So beginning with the square root of 25y squared, to help us simplify, let's write 25 as five times five, and y squared as y times y, which means this is equal to the square root of five times five times y times y. And now let's use the commutative property of multiplication and change the order of this product. Let's write this as the square root of five times y times five times y, which is equal to the square of five y. So we have the square root of the square of five y. And remember we were looking for a variable expression times itself, where a variable expression squared equal to 25 y squared, which means the square root of 25 y squared is equal to five y. Again, showing the work like this, we can think of the square root as undoing the squaring, giving us one factor of five y. Again, the reason why the square root of 25 y squared is equal to five y is because if we square five y, we do get the radicand of 25 y squared. For the last square root, we have the square root of 121 x squared, which means we're looking for a variable expression times itself, or the square of a variable expression equal to 121 x squared. So beginning with the square root of 121 x squared, 121 is equal to 11 times 11, Let's write this as the square root of 11 times 11 times x times x. And now I'll change the order of the multiplication and write this as the square root of 11 times x times 11 times x. And because 11 times x is equal to 11x, we can write this as the square root of the square of 11x. And because the square of 11x is equal to 121x squared, the square root of 121x squared is equal to one factor of 11x. Again, showing the work in this way, we can think of the square root as undoing the squaring, again, giving us one factor of 11x. And we know this is correct because if we square 11x, we do get the expression under the square root or the radicand of 121x squared. I hope you found this helpful.